Today I'm going to guide you where you're going to need to go for the lesson, but you're going to tell me what to do politely. Okay? So first things first, let's revisit something we already know how to do. x squared times x to the fourth. What's the answer to that? x to the sixth, right? And how do you know it's x to the sixth? When you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. Okay? I'm okay with that. What about x to the ninth divided by x to the fifth? Remember, you're not telling me how to do it. I mean, you're not telling me what the answer is. You're telling me how to do it. When you're dividing like bases, you subtract your exponents. So now tell me the answer. X to the fourth. Good. Okay. What about this one? X squared to the third. When a, when a power is being raised to a power, you multiply those, right? Okay, we're going to come back to this in just a second. So I didn't just do that for nothing. We'll come back to it in just a second. Okay, think with me for a moment about an exponential function. What's exponential growth look like? Yeah, good. You're showing me with your hands. Good. Comes like this and rises up like that. It's getting actually closer and closer. I did a poor job of drawing that right there. Right? What's a logarithmic function look like? You did this yesterday in your homework, right? It's like this. Yeah? Huh. That looks familiar a little bit. It looks familiar like when we did quadratics. Remember when we did quadratics? And it looked like this. And then we did square root functions. And it looked like that. Remember that? How were... Would somebody shut that door, please. I don't know who that is, but they're being super loud. Thank you. When we did this, we talked about a special relationship that these two functions have, didn't we? Do you remember that? What makes it a special relationship? What line is that that I just drew? Very good. Y equals X. And if we're not paying attention to the negative part of the parabola, what actually happens with these two functions right here? Now they're, they're a reflection, which makes them inverse functions, right? Do you remember that? I mean, obviously two people did, because I heard two people say it. Are the rest of you remembering that right now? What about these two? What if I put the line y equals x in there? Are they going to reflect on top of each other across that line? y equals x? So this exponential function and this logarithm function are what? They are inverses. Because we know they're inverses, a lot of doors open now. Okay? Because we know they're inverses, a lot of things can happen that couldn't happen before. Because now we can refer back to these problems when we have a problem that looks like this. Log base 2 of 5 plus log base 2 of x. That's what you're given as a problem. Okay? The directions are condense this logarithm. Now I have to teach you this part. You're about to teach me the next part, but I have to teach you this part. When it says condense the logarithm, in the answer, we're only allowed to write log one time. We only want to write log one time. So I'm going to go ahead and write log, log base 2 because I want to write at once. Thinking about the fact that these are inverse functions and knowing that if I multiply like bases, I add the exponents, what's going to happen when I'm condensing logarithms and I'm adding logs? I should what? Somebody just said it. Say it louder. Multiply. Very good. Multiply what? 
So like this? Wait, that's it? In my exponents, if I'm multiplying like bases, I add my exponents. Because they're inverses, in my logs, when I'm adding logs, I multiply their arguments. Is that difficult? Good. What about this one? Remember what's happening here in the exponents. So what is this answer going to be? I'm condensing again. So how many times do I write log? Once. This time it's log base 4. Why is it log base 4? Can you tell me that? Because it's already log base 4 over here, right? I don't change the bases. Keep the same base. What do I do over here as my, as my answer, as my argument, if I'm subtracting my logs? Mm -hmm. 3 over y. Perfect. Hard or easy? Easy? Yeah, it's easy because you're giving me the instructions, right? Good job. This one's the, the one that can be tricky if you let it until you figure it out, and then it's not tricky anymore. Log base 4 of x squared. Now, does there seem like anything that you can condense in this logarithm? Not really, right? But there is. Can we have exponents inside of logarithms? No, nah, we don't want them. When I had a power to a power, what did I do with those numbers? Multiplied. What am I going to do with that 2? It's going to become a multiplier. Where? Right there. Done. So what happened to that 2? It moved down in front of the logarithm as a multiplier. Everything else stayed the same. Any questions about that? Any questions? Can we go the other way? We expanded, right? I mean, excuse me, we condensed. Can you condense? Where, where you take several logarithms and write log once? What if I, can you go the other way? What if, can we go backwards? Log base 4 of 3xy. Can you expand that for me? How many times am I going to write the word log for expanding this problem? Good guess. 3. Why 3? There's... There's three terms, right? A 3, an x, and a y. So it's going to say log base 4 of 3, then what? Plus y plus, because they're multiplying. Log base 4 of x plus, done. Hard or easy? It looks hard. Relatively simple, okay. Your word's not mine. Log base 5 of 3x squared over y cubed. Mm -hmm. I made it tricky on purpose. Where do I start? Log base 5 of... I don't know why I chose a 3 on every problem. Sorry about that. And then what? What's next? The x? What's the 3 and the x doing to each other? So what do I put right here? Add plus? i got to write log again, right? So i got to write log for each term. Log base 5 of, of x. And the 2 goes in front. Good, good. And then what? Minus, oh good, 3 log base 5 of y. 
Here was the 3 term, here was the x squared term, and here was the y to the third term. You okay with that? Log base 7, fourth root of x squared minus, not minus, z. I'll make that a z. That was good. Hmm. I'm not messing with you. What do you think? Log base 7. Can I do a little writing underneath here to help, help it be a little bit easier for me? Is that okay? Okay, so what's, what's it mean to be the fourth root? So could I write that as an exponent instead? Wouldn't that be a lot easier? What would that be as an exponent? Remember? Very good. One fourth. And couldn't I distribute that one fourth in here using my rules of exponents? What would this be then? X to the one half, z to the one fourth. Isn't that going to be a whole lot easier now? Because I have log base seven of that. So what do I write? I got to deal with this term first. Okay, so one half log base seven of x, good. Plus one fourth log base seven of, very good. I mean, I can try really hard to make them harder. I would have to try really hard to make them harder. You see what I'm saying? What am I trying to say to you about your work, your work that I need you to do today? It's like it's stuff like this, okay? Now, here's what you have to trust me on. This is stuff we have to know how to do so that when we start solving equations, that stuff is a lot easier. If we don't know how to expand and condense logarithms, solving logarithmic equations are going to be really hard. But if you know how to do this stuff, it's going to not be really hard. Almost the opposite. Okay? Questions? So today is one of those tedious days where you just got to do some examples to get the technique down so that when we get to solving equations, you already got this and we can just go to the solving equations part. Fair enough? So practice this. You got problems on the board? Practice this. You have the rest of the period to get it done. Okay? Mark it, set, go. Peace.